Hi guys, I'm Kane from Travel Explore 4x4 and I'm going to run you through my rear drawer system that I've done in this. It's uh, a custom made one and I ended up going with aluminium over ply. Um, there's a few reason why, reasons why and I'll sort of touch on that as we go. Um, but yeah, let's get in there and show you what it looks like. As you can see, I've only got kind of half of the boot taken up so far. So this is kind of a stage one for me. Uh, the reason why I've only got this side of uh, the, the draw system done or the, the boot done is because when we travel around, we're gonna have our dog with us. So she's gonna take up this side. Uh, having said that though, um, I am going to go and put another drawer here and have her sort of sit on top so I don't want to go too high with it so it's still going to be probably about the same level as this um, but that's the reasoning why I've done that and on this side I did this side first because this is pretty much like my kitchen setup, my cooking area um, and yeah I've tested it out a fair, fair bit now and it's it works really good it's sort of everything's come together really nicely and yeah I am stoked with how it turned out as you guys can see I've gone with the 85 litre Bushman fridge uh, there was a couple of reasons why I went this way uh, first being weight saving so I had an 80 litre Waco before this one and that is about four five kilos heavier than what this one is and then also with having the Bushmans, I don't need to have a drop slide or just a slide that comes out for to actually access the fridge. So I think a drop slide's nearly 30, 35 kilos or something. So I'm saving about 40 kilos just by having this Bushman's fridge. So that was a bit of a no-brainer. And then just ease of use as well. Like the Bushman's you can just open it, you've got access, you can see everything. Even with a drop slide when you bring them out, it's, you know, sort of getting in the top and trying to see over things. Uh, so this, this just works really well. And I know some people sort of worry about things falling out when you're full driving and whatnot, but there's a few things that I do to sort of stop anything falling out. And I'll go through that maybe in a different video when I maybe do a review on the Bushmans. Um, but this, yeah, this works really well. I've done a fair few trips now and a fair bit of four-wheel driving with it and I haven't once sort of pulled it open and have things fall out. So it's just about how you pack it. Same as, same as you know, if you had a sort of chest type fridge. Um, but yeah, so that's why, that's one of the reasons why I went with the Bushmans. Let's get into the drawers now. I've got a mate, Steve, who works at Saltiga Metals and they do all aluminium and stainless steel fabrication. So he was able to help me knock these up. Uh, I came with him with the plan that I, how I wanted this to work and how I wanted it to look. And he was, yeah, easy, just drilled up and just got to work and started bending it up and it, it went surprisingly quick. Uh, and he got all the, all the runners and everything for me as well. So he, he completed it pretty much for me I, I helped him in the factory but yeah he welded everything up for me and it's yeah it's turned out really well Also got it all powder coated in like a grey, just to obviously the just the raw aluminium doesn't look that great. So got it powder coated and then obviously carpeted everything. And the carpets worked really well because it's just helps dampen down any of the noise that was 
sort of happening and you know once you've put bits and pieces in these drawers and it's aluminium it's obviously going to be a bit noisy but with the carpet it's worked out really well uh, so this drawer is like a pantry top drawer and I've got my Nespresso coffee machine in here milk frother and I can actually put I can stand up sort of like tomato sauce bottles and stuff in here but yeah there's a bit of storage in here that just to store things for cooking and whatnot as I said this whole side's kind of like my cooking station sort of kitchen this drawer here is where I keep all my cutlery and plates and bits and pieces it's not properly set up yet and I'm still sort of going to get a few things to make this work a bit better um, but yeah I've got my cutlery I keep my induction cooker in here um, plates and bowls just some random plastic ones I still have to get some nice ones and then I keep just bits and pieces like oil and whatnot um, but yeah that works really well I'm looking to get like a little bit of an aluminium plate that sits over here so I can also use it as an extra bench uh, but I've already I have got a bench already as you could probably see before which is this one down here so that's obviously what I use for when I'm getting things out the fridge or just prepping bits and pieces and I also do cook on here uh, I normally extend this all the way out when I'm cooking because obviously I've got the tailgate there and it's not too much of an issue but I don't want to cook here all the time and get all the oil and fat and stuff going up there so I'll show you what this looks like all the way extended out so you've got access there and normally I, I work from this side so then I can get things out of the fridge and do all the prep and stuff here but then when I'm cooking I'll go and pull this all the way out like that and then I'll have the induction that will sit up there and then I plug it in up there so in this way you can see I'm still under the awning but I'm not under the tailgate I can cook out here and yeah and it's 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 plenty stable enough I've cooked on here heaps of times they're pretty strong runners um, so that's that that's worked really really well I've done a fair few trips now doing that I'm really stoked with how this whole setup works it's you kind of don't know until you're actually using it and you go through the whole planning phase and you think oh yeah this this looks good it should should work all right and I can put these bits and pieces here um, but once you actually got it and it's, it comes together how you want it's just it's yeah just super stoked it's sort of the best sort of system that I've had in a four-wheel drive so far and I know you can get get awesome draw systems made up from different companies and whatnot and they turn out awesome like they look really really good but this yeah I saved a heap of money doing it this way and like to be honest I think this has come up a treat like it looks it still looks quite factory in the back here with all the black carpet and and yeah it just there's no noise it doesn't rattle um, it just works how it should so apart from the weight saving using aluminium over ply you also save on space as well you can you can see where if I had if I was using ply I would be probably like 12 mil ply at least and you'd have to have 12 mil butted up to like two 12 mil pieces butted up next to each other and then you could mount your runner to it so with this the aluminium is only about 2.5 mil I think it was so you've you've only got five mil worth of material there um, and then you can mount your runners so you end up with a little bit more space it's not huge but it's still you know you still end up with that extra space and can just fit a little bit more in as you guys can see here this is where I've got all my charging um, sockets and plugs and things so I've got the button to turn the inverter on that obviously turns this double pole 240 volt outlet 
I've got a cigarette socket up here and an Anderson plug there. I've got two sockets that have USB ports in them, so they've each got two USB ports each, and they've also got a USB-C in the middle as well. Because a lot of things these days come with USB-C charging, so I thought I'd get that to kind of future-proof it. In these ones, you can actually turn this, the socket on from from on the socket itself so you don't have that blue light on all the time and they're not always drawing power even though they don't they don't draw a lot but you just turn it on and off from the actual unit itself so that's uh that's pretty cool and another cigarette socket down there so I will be putting a few different switches up here for different lights and I'm going to be running in the back here and then also I'm going to have a water outlet down here and an air outlet as well once I mount my compressor in the back there somewhere. And then here I've got another cigarette socket. I know there's a few, so I've got another cigarette socket here and another two USB charging points there. So these two here run off the batteries in the front. So I've got two, DCS lithium batteries in the front, so that's 150 amps in the front. And then all of this stuff runs off my 200 amp lithium system under the back floor here. And I also run a 2000 watt inverter that, that powers this stuff here. So yeah, it, it, all, it all works pretty good. There's also this space here that I've got that I hadn't actually planned, it sort of just worked out like that. Um, but it's, yeah, it's awesome. You can actually lay your phone there and walkie-talkies or whatever you're charging. You can actually put it there, plug it in, charge it. And yeah, it's got a safe spot to sit. It's not gonna fall off. I'm possibly looking to make up a little raised edges here so then I can put stuff in there while I'm driving and it doesn't float around. Uh, but yeah, that's, that's kind of that system in a nutshell. So I'll, I'll go and show you what it looks like in here behind and yeah, just let you know what, what else I'm gonna do. So you can see, you can see there's a fair bit of room next to it. And I, as I said, that's where my dog's gonna go when we do our, our traveling, but that's where I go and store all my, you know, table, chairs, all that sort of stuff when I go go away camping at the moment and then you can see let's see if we can turn this up you can see the room behind the, the fridge so there's a fair bit there and I'll show you you might be thinking well you can't really access that other side there um, behind behind this panel but I'll go and show you so I've got the the cargo barrier but you can actually access down through here. So the weight of this setup, guys. As I said, I went aluminium to try and save weight in the back here, because you get to your GVMs and GCMs and stuff so quick when you're towing and all that sort of jazz. So that's the whole reason for, for doing this. Um, so I weighed all this before it went in. So with the these two drawers plus the fridge surround that was 44 kilos and so you, as you know anyone that's done right like draw systems themselves or um, picked up the runners and stuff they are that's probably most of the weight there is the, is the runners themselves um, the fridge is 26.2 kilos I believe so this whole this whole side here as it is now with obviously not with the stuff that's in there but that that's 70 kilos there just that stuff so i think that's pretty good considering if i had to go on the waco with a with a drop down with a drop slide or something like that the waco was 29.6 kilos i believe and what i looked up for a drop slide for that waco it was 40 kilos so that's, I'm already up at 70 kilos. That's just for the fridge to, to access the fridge. So this, I've got fridge plus 
storage, kitchen sort of set up, pantry. Um, so it's a bit of a, it was a bit of a no-brainer to sort of go this way to save on that much weight. When I put the, this second drawer in, plus the water tank, I'll go and weigh, everything, weigh those in as well, and then I'll see how much this whole system weighs in the back. Um, that should be coming pretty soon, and that will be the sort of final build for the back here. So that will be in the stage two of this, of this rear drawer build. For those of you that have done like your own drawer system and if you weighed it already, like if you did apply one, I'd love to know kind of what the weight was of yours when you did it. Uh, just to sort of compare what the weight of what all this is. Um, so if you drop that down in the comments, if you've made your own, you weighed it, um, yeah, throw it down and It'd be good to get a bit of an insight on that and see if I have actually saved on weight or if I just wasted my time. Um, but yeah, going aluminium normally is more expensive because aluminium is expensive. I got looked after by Steve at Saltega Metals because he's my mate, so I got mates rates. Um, but if you, if you have a design that you want to do, they custom make everything. So just draw something up, draw a bit of a plan, dimensions, all that sort of stuff, and then send it through to him. I'll drop it, I'll put his email and that down in the, in the description. Um, but yeah, email him your plan and he'll be able to give you a price on, on the setup that you're looking to do. So, um, but yeah, I'm super stoked with this. And as I said, like I've, I've gone off-road already with this and I've done some pretty bumpy stuff and nothing rattles it doesn't come off <laughs> like it's there's a lot of weight sitting here and when you're going over big bumps and through sand dunes and things like that you, you kind of worry but it's all screwed down really well screwed down to my floor that i did myself and that's in some of my other videos if you want to check that out um, and then if you're also keen to if you haven't watched my other videos on my 12 volt system um, that will be there too so you can go and check those out um, but yeah guys that's my stage one of my rear draw system so yeah i hope that sort of gave you a bit of an insight and gave you maybe some different ideas that you can do um, but yeah drop something in the comments it's be good to sort of hear what you guys think of the way that i've gone um, but I think it's, yeah, I think it's turned out really well. And I really think it kind of looks quite factory in here with the black and it just all ties in together. So um, yeah, hope you guys enjoyed that and I will see you in the next video. Thanks for watching.